is another word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. Raw and uncut productions. Uh, perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on and let's uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Irish Telecast, and I'm very grateful that you're here. Okay. Um, you can reach the ministry by calling four seven five. Three zero zero three eight five zero. And thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle teacher and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ street and outreach ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850-24 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. To the Word of God through Jesus Christ with Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. God bless you and enjoy the message. Previously on the Word of God through Jesus Christ telecast, we serve a three in one God, a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. One God. Some of you don't understand that. That's why in the Old Testament, in Genesis chapter 1, God said, let us make man in our image. Now, this evangelist said, 
image and likeness meant symbol. That's a lie. Image and likeness means a duplicate of me. That's what God said. Let us make man like us, a duplicate of us. Let him have dominion and authority. And in the image of God created he him. Now this wasn't physical, meaning when God said image, it wasn't a physical image. He did make man and 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 he put it blue he put him in he formed man of the dust of the earth, blew the breath of life, his spirit, into his nostrils, and he became a living soul. He didn't, he, he wasn't a spirit. He had a spirit, which is the breath of God. But he became a living soul. Now you might say, well, what does all this have to do with the, the lesson? Because in order for you to start casting out demons, and out, you got to know this. You got to know whose power you're tapping into to accomplish that. Stay with me for a minute. Just walk with me because we're getting ready to go somewhere deep and then we're going to be through. Walk with me. Get ready to throw something at you right quick. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, and this is for that evangelist that said to me, how can Jesus be God when there's only one God? See, again, man, you need to let this go. Stop trying to think and figure God out. Don't you got some flaws with your flesh? Hasn't the devil sent a messenger, Satan, to buffet you? And you got a thorn in your flesh? When Paul said thorn in his flesh, he meant there was a physical ailment he had. Don't you got a physical ailment? Concentrate on God helping you with that. Stop trying to rationalize God with this because you'll never do it. You'll lose your mind, man. You won't do it. There's geniuses, Howard Hughes, other geniuses that have lost their mind because they were too smart. Apart from God, they, they depended on their own wisdom. Don't do that. Don't do that. Isaiah chapter 42. I'm going to start at verse 1. Behold, this is God talking. And it's talking about the office of Jesus Christ. Now, isn't it somehow in Isaiah 42, the office of Jesus Christ will be discussed? Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect. In whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out. Let me read that for you again, verse 5. Thus saith God the Lord, who? He that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spit it to them that walk therein. Now verse 6, God said, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light to the Gentiles to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Now look at verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Now, 
If God said, I won't give my glory to another, then why would Jesus say, glorify thou me with the glory that I had with thee before the foundations of the earth? Now, let's tune into our broadcast and see what the God of heaven has to say unto us. God says, 42 of Isaiah, verse 8, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. Now, you got to understand something about God. If you didn't catch it the first time, God has said it again. Over there in chapter 48, verse 11, God said, For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it, for how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. So for Jesus to say, Father, give me the glory that I shared with you, he had to be God. For God to be talking about Jesus Christ's ministry in the book of Isaiah. And God is, as we was just reading, God was talking about himself. Isaiah chapter 42, he was talking about himself. He said, Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. The Holy Ghost is God. Now, in Revelation, it talks about the seven spirits of God. We're going to talk about that at another time when we delve into the doctrine of the Holy Ghost. The seven spirits of God are not seven different spirits like people would assume because that's how you read it. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of wisdom. He is the spirit of knowledge. He is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. He is the spirit of truth. These are his traits, and he's God. Jesus said in John 4 and 24, God is a spirit. And he's looking for those to worship him in spirit and in truth. And this is how he wants us to come to him. Now, let's go up a notch, back to 1 Timothy 3 and 16, and this is what we're going to ride this one out and be through. 1 Timothy 3 and 16. And I am very weak right now, I'm telling you. Come on, wife, let God do what he got to do in you so you can pray for me. Or you could get up here and let God use you to minister, and I can sit down. 1 Timothy 3 and 16. Again, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, meaning that body was kept right. Seen of angels. Let's stop right there. Seen of angels. When God led me to tell you that the title was or is call on backup because there's more for us than against us. There are a lot of people praying and you're wondering, is God hearing your prayer? God hears your prayer Now, there's sometimes God will move fast. There's sometimes God will move what we call slow. There's sometimes it seems like God ain't moving, isn't moving at all. Then there's sometimes that God moved before you know it. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 24, God said, 
And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Now, here's, here's where we're going to go. We're going to close out with this. Angels do the will of God. They are servants. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says, this is what God said, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Minister means to serve. God was saying, angels, they go out and they help those of us that are heirs of salvation. If you are a Christian, there are angels assigned to you, to your life, to you, and they are walking with you. God has them protecting you while you sleep. It, uh, the angel of death or sickness or whatever try to come into your room while you sleep at night. God has angels posted right there around your bed, around your door. And those demons, when they see these angels, they know that they cannot come up against these angels and win. Though they do initiate fights. Again, the book of Daniel, chapter 10. Verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. The thought of this lesson is the secret of how to move the hand of God in prayer. Let's deal with that while we're dealing with call on backup because there's more for us than against us. These two points, the thought and the title, are going to work together and then we're going to be through. In order for you to understand prayer, you need to understand that there is a whole nother realm in which we come in contact with. Realm means kingdom. It also means dominion. There are a lot of unlearned people who use the word REM, R-E-M. In the spirit REM, that's because they hear everybody saying it, so they figure this makes them deep. You need to sit down, listen, and be quiet. It's not REM. It's not realm. It's realm. R-E-A-L-M. Realm. Spirit. Realm. Apostle, why do you say spirit? Well, I could say spirit. But I say spirit because when God was training me 27 years ago, uh, my father, my spiritual father back then, who saw God using me and who walked with me in every office God was bringing me through. He is a teacher. He's the type of brother, you don't ask him a question and expect a two minute answer. It's not gonna happen. He's gonna clear his throat and then he's going to take you all the way around so that when you do get there, <laughs> you understand more than well. So I like the way he would use almost a Shakespearean, Shakespearean dialect. Spit it. That sounds deep. Spit it. Not spirit. You know, ah, my spirit. No, my spit it. When you're reading the Bible, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that sounds deep, don't it? Oh, God. And there's so much power in that. Anyway, God allowed me to pick that up. So, the spirit realm where angels and demons clash, where they operate. How Jacob dreamed and saw a ladder set up from earth, reaching all the way to heaven, 
and angels of God ascending and descending. Angels are constantly moving in and out of the spirit realm. Demons are constantly moving in and out of the spirit realm. Get your pens. Here's where you want to take notes. When you are a Christian, there are holy angels that protect you. But when you're not a Christian and you're not saved, there are demons that use you. A Christian that's saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved from the tribulation. Saved from the lake of fire. No demon can possess you. But they can oppress you. They can attack your life. They can attack your family, friends, things, your circumstance, your resources, and things like that. But they can't touch you unless God allows them to. They can't even touch your stuff unless God allows them to. Real quick, I need to jot over. I need to jog over, rather, to the book of Job, chapter 1, where Job said to God in verse 10, Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance, meaning his cattle, is increased in the land. The devil was saying, I can't touch him or his stuff. Why? Because you, O oh God, have put a hedge of protection around him. When God has a hedge of protection around you, you cannot be touched. The devil says, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath. And he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So when he said to God, You reach down and strike all he has, God didn't do that. Instead, what God did is he removed the hedge of protection. How? By his word, he said, okay, everything he has is in thy power. Just don't touch him. And God's word is bond. So angels do God's bidding because right there in Job chapter 1, Scripture says in verse 6, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them, what it actually says in the Hebrew, in the midst of them. Now the angels, they go before God daily. They do. Jesus even said that angels for children go before the Father daily. Watch how you treat children. So Angels go before God, they have meetings and report and yada, yada, yada. And then here comes Satan, who used to be an elect angel. He used to protect God's holiness. Now he's not. He lost his position, but not his privilege. His privilege, he still can talk to God, but he don't have the position of protecting God's holiness no more. No, he wasn't the choir director in heaven. He protected God's holiness. He was a song. He was a doxology. So what happened? When he came in the midst of them, God ended the meeting. Why? Because it wasn't Satan business what they were talking about. In the book of Daniel, it says in Daniel chapter 10 that Gabriel said in verse 12, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. I have a word of encouragement for those of you that have been fasting. 
this word is coming from God, so is for me also. Don't stop your fast. Because from, oh, glory, I'm hearing God. From the first day that you fasted, God heard your prayer. Wait a minute. He did more than that. Remember this scripture. I hope y'all wrote it down. Isaiah 65, verse 24, where God said, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. That's what God said. No, listen. Here's the gist of this lesson. The secret of how to move the hand of God in prayer is you have to understand, you have to be skillful in scripture. I hear people say, work the word. That's manipulation of witchcraft. Don't listen to that. You have to apply the word. You have to know to apply the right word at the right time on the right situation and you will get the right biblical results. God said, and it shall come to pass that before they call, before you go, Lord, before you do that, he said, I will answer. Why? Because he's omniscient. He knows your heart, your spirit. He knows what you're going to ask. He already knows if it's in his will or not because he knows what you're going to ask. And so when you ask, he already answered. Apostle, how do you know that? Well, in 1 John chapter 5, Verse 14, here's what the Lord told Brother John to write. And this, this is, you got to know this. You got to write this down. This is very important. If you miss this, then your prayer life will be highly affected. Affected. But if you catch this, your prayer life will be highly effective. First John chapter 5 verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Did you catch that? The only prayers that God hear are those that are according to his will. If it's not according to his will, he don't hear it. A lot of you that have prayed and the prayers have not come to pass, either you was walking wrong or you was walking halfway right or you haven't given up some stuff, or you were praying wrong. Now you could even pray with the right intentions, but your method could be wrong. Let's go to the second verse, the next verse, verse 15, and then we'll talk about that part. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Two points. One, if you pray according to God's will, he hear you. Two, if he hear you, then you got it. It might take a while. In the book of Daniel, the angel said, but the prince of the king, he said, for for the, from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to j chasten thyself, that means to fast, before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. He was sent because the prayer was heard the first day. Then he said in verse 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia, this is a territorial demon, a cosmocrator, a ruling demon, 
that sat over Persia withstood Gabriel 20 and 1 days. Some of you might ask, well, how could he withstand Gabriel if Gabriel is a holy angel and the prince of Persia is a demon? Very simple. Because Gabriel is the messenger angel. He delivers messages. That's why he was coming to Daniel with the message. But what happened when that territorial demon started fighting him and they were, oh my goodness, you don't understand. This, let me tell you how real this is. Some demons and angels, when they fight and they're clashing in the second heaven, they will interfere with nature. The weather will bug out. Storms are happen. Tornadoes are happen. Lightning, thunder, all kind of things will happen because these super, supernatural beings are throwing each other around and fighting in the spirit realm. Now, they're not subject to gravity. So it's not like they'll be thrown into a door. You like on TV, you see thrown into the door and the door smashed. And no, no. Because when Satan got thrown, when he got thrown through the earth, straight down to the pit, he went straight through the ground. Oh, y'all don't know that. In the book of... <laughs> Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, God said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Now, it's important you understand that because Jesus said he saw Satan fall as lightning from heaven. How is Jesus going to see that if y'all are to believe that he didn't come into existence until the New Testament? He was the angel of the Lord. He was, he, that was a theophany. In the spirit, that's why it, when the devil said in, in Matthew chapter 4, when he tempted Jesus and he said, if you be the son of God, that's what it says in English. But in the Greek, he said, since you be, because he knew who Jesus was. Jesus didn't have to introduce himself. Jesus created him. When Jesus told him, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, he was talking about him. Don't tempt me. I made you. How are you going to tempt me? How are you going to offer me anything? All this is mine. I made it all. God said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Which actually in the Hebrew is called day star. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. That means he was in the earth. He was on earth. And he talking about, I will ascend. One day we'll talk about that again. Uh, the, the Lord ever used me to do a teaching on that. It's on the YouTube channel about how between verse 1 and 2 of, of Genesis chapter 1, that's where the fall happened. But you, you have to know that. But anyway, he said that Lucifer said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. He, that's because he set his throne up on the earth because God gave him the earth to run like God ran heaven. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the north. Now he's talking about in God's office. I will ascend, excuse me, above the heights of the clouds. He's talking about the kind of glory cloud. I will be like the most high. I will be like El Shaddai, El Elyon. Not the loving qualities, but he wanted worship. God said, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the size of the pit, pile through the earth. Gabriel said the prince of Persia fought him for 21 days. Imagine Daniel fasting. 
Now there's some people, I know a lady that was on YouTube talking about, we're going to do a Daniel 21 day fast. And after that, you know, and I said, Lord, but so what happens after 21 days? See, people are following the wrong people. They following what people are not God. You're not supposed, listen, the angel, when he told Daniel, I have come with the answer. That was day 22. His fast was over. Because for 21 days, he was held up and Daniel was still fasting. Now, if it took 31 days, then we would have been reading, but for 31 days I was held up. Then that lady probably would say, let's go on to Daniel 31 day fast. You can't do that. And the food that they're talking about, you can't do none of that. You got to know what Daniel ate, him and his friends. What did they eat? What, you got you to gotta notice that. But anyway, this demon over Persia was fighting Gabriel and Michael, who's the captain of God's army. He came and fought that prince of Persia, that territorial demon, and Gabriel was able to come through. And Michael was fighting him all the while until Gabriel got ready to go back. Because Gabriel said in verse 20, then said he, knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? Let me read out of the Living Bible for you. Daniel chapter 10, verse 20. He said, do you know why I have come? I am here to tell you what is written in the book of the future. So he came to tell Daniel about what it was going to say in Revelation. He was going to talk to him about the tribulation. And then he said, then when I leave, I will go again to fight my way back past the prince of Persia and after him, the prince of Greece. Now there's two demons he's got to fight on the way back, territorial demons, mind you. Only Michael, the angel who guards your people, Israel, will be there to help me. Now, there's times that angelic beings were called on in Scripture. I want to share with you in the book of Joshua, chapter 5, that Joshua himself was used by God to call on or have a visit by the captain of God's army, who, when you read it, you know that it had to be Michael. Chapter 5, verses 10 through 15, out of the Living Bible. While they were camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover during the evening of the 14th day of the month. The next day they began to eat from the gardens and grain fields, which they invaded, and they made unleavened bread. The following day no manna fell, and it was never seen again. So from that time on, they lived on the crops of Canaan. As Joshua was sizing up the city of Jericho, a man appeared nearby with a drawn sword. Joshua strode over to him and demanded, are you friend or foe? And he said, I am the commander in chief of the Lord's army, he replied. Joshua fell to the ground before him and worshiped him and said, give me your commands. Take off your shoes, the commander told him, for this is holy ground. And Joshua did. Now that more than likely was the angel of the Lord. Even though he said captain, because if it was a natural angel, a regular angel, he would have told Daniel, I mean, uh, he would have told Joshua, don't bow down and worship me. I'm only your brother. That's what the angel told uh, John in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. So see, this, there's, there's times that angels are manifesting themselves in the natural. I've seen them a lot of times. I, I saw one at Barnes & Nobles years ago, and he gave me money to buy a Strong's Concordance. I was like, wow. And there was my cousin and evangelist was there, my daughter Angelica, who's an evangelist. She was right there. They saw this. They, they saw the guy. He was the tallest one in the building, an angel. An uh, angel for real. Because when he handed me the money and I looked at them and I looked back, he was gone. And as tall as he was, I couldn't see him nowhere. 
Oh, I've seen angels and demons and all of that. And God used me to cast demons out. So I, I, I remember the Lord sent me to the hospital. Uh, there was a brother that was bedridden. He was on life support. He was on, um, he was brain dead, according to the nurse. And he, he was just a vegetable. The Lord led me to go in his room. Me and another brother took another brother with me. We went together, actually. The other brother was reading to this brother that was in the bed. He was reading some scripture to him. The Lord had me standing at the door, fighting in the spirit, praying in tongues, fighting in the Holy Ghost. And the Lord had used me to bind and loose and cast this demon out. This demon got up out of that man's body, ran by me, dived into another man's body in the next room who was in a coma, and his family was around him all crying. And then the man sat up and pulled the tubes out of his arm, and they called cold blue. And I was like, oh my goodness. I looked at the brother and said, Brother Brett, did you see that? He said, did you see that? I said, yeah, that demon ran right by me. God had me fighting in the spirit. The point is, d angels and demons, they do interact in the earth realm. But everybody don't see them. Everyone's not uh, warriors. Everyone's not on that level of spiritual warfare. There's a lot that are, but there's a lot that aren't. A lot that aren't. Jesus even said in Matthew 26, 53, where he was getting ready to be arrested and Peter had cut off uh, the ear of Malchus's servant. Jesus told him in verse 52, put away your sword. Those using swords will get killed. Don't you realize that I can ask my father for thousands of angels? Now, in the King James Version, it says, says it differently and much more informative. Matthew 26, 53. Very powerful, 26, 53. I'm so weak. What Jesus said was, thinkest, that, thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? Then he said, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? So this is why he didn't call on those angels. And when he said over 12 legions, one legion in the Roman regime consists of 6,000 soldiers. So now we can liken that to the angels there when he said over 12 legions. So one legion is 6,000, 12 legion would be 72,000, but he said more than. So all of these angels would have came into the earth realm and, and don't think they would have came there fighting those men. Uh-uh. But all that demonic activity, there were demons present. I got to close. One, because I'm getting weak. And the Lord said that you've, you've gotten a lot. You've gotten a lot. You, you've gotten a lot. If you took notes, you've gotten a lot. If you play this back, you've gotten a lot. I'm, I'm going to leave with this, though. For those of you fasting, don't stop fasting. Don't, don't, don't give up the fasting. Don't give up what you're standing for. If you're praying and fasting for someone, keep fighting. I understand it don't seem like that things are moving. Because I'm telling you, God got me praying for some people and fasting for, I'm going to say, an individual. I have to. I have to. That's my obligation, my responsibility. Uh, I have to because she's very important to my life. So I have to fight for her. You know, um, God gave her unto me. And God is moving. And he's, he is setting us up for a big blessing. But the enemy 
is attacking her. He, he, he thought he had her surrounded, but the Lord been leading me to pray that angels surround her. That's why God told me to name this, the title being, Call on Backup, because there's more for us than against us. And like Elisha asked God to open his servant eyes and he saw that there was chariots of fire and horses round about. There were so many. <laughs> a brother got to fight for his wife. And there's times when the wife, you got to fight for your husband. You got to. You got, you have every right. Listen, you have every right to. How? When they got their own will. No. Listen. When it said that God give us a free will, here's what it is. Guess this revelation. You have a choice to say yes to God willingly or to say yes to God while admitting you were wrong. One way or another, you're going to say yes to God. One way or another, you're going to say that God is right and you're wrong. Listen, hear this. Please hear this. Please. If you've been through so much in your life, if the devil has oppressed your life, and messed your life up at one time. God wants to bless you. What, is, what has God done so wrong to you that you won't just let God bless you? This is to some people, not one person. This right here is a question to some people. God said, you know who you are. I don't. But God said, you know who you are. Why are you fighting God? Things are not going to change and get better until you stop fighting God. Those people are not going to leave your house until you stop fighting God. The people on your job are not going to leave you alone until you stop fighting God. Your next door neighbor is not going to stop stressing you out until you stop fighting God. Your wife is not going to be released until you stop fighting God. Okay, some might say, well, I, I, I don't fight God. I'm fighting the enemy. Well, <laughs> the moment you start doing that, there's going to be a fight that happens because of that. You saw what, what, what Gabriel said. For 21 days, he was held up. So imagine what Daniel was going through. Three, four weeks. He said he didn't wash up. He didn't drink nothing. He didn't eat nothing. He didn't anoint himself. Three, four weeks. Absolute fast. Straight. He didn't break. He didn't do like I would do 12 hours like the Lord told me. Then stop and and eat a few things, and then the next morning when he wake me up, start my 12 hours again? No. And if God said to me this time, go the whole day and go 24, I got to do it. I used to fast 30 days at a time uh, when the Lord first uh, put me in this office of apostle back in 1994. So it's, it's really no problem. I could do it, and I know God would keep me. And doctors might say, oh, you shouldn't. No, no. I'm old-fashioned. I believe in following what the Holy Ghost say. Because big fast, big power. Little fast, little power. But God does honor every moment that you fast. He does. He does. And some, because of medical reasons and level of faith, can't fast but a certain amount of time. That's understandable. God honors even if you do an hour a day. He honors that. It's just dedicate that whole hour to him. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. By the third day, that's going to be the roughest hour you ever had in your life. Why? 
Because when you're fasting, you're denying your flesh what your flesh wants. And your spirit man is connecting to God. And once you connect to God, you're, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, your gifts will intensify and magnify. You'll see, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, your vocabulary will expand. Oh, that I will see Kaya. You don't understand. When you get close to God, when you get in His face, you'll see what God sees. You'll like what God likes. You'll love what God likes. You'll hate what God hates. You don't want to be around what God don't want you around. When you have given up what you want, Jesus called it picking up your cross and carrying it. And that cross is heavy. When you do research, you'll find that the cross had the cross beam and the long one. The cross beam itself weighed between 150 to 300 pounds. So here was Jesus Christ all night going to court, no sleep, no rest, crying in the garden of Gethsemane before being arrested. And knowing he, what he got, he knew what he had to go through. He's God. So he allowed his flesh to go through the suffering. And he had to carry this cross. No rest. No sleep. And then he fell. And a, a brother named Simeon, or Niger, was it Niger? I believe that's who it was. Let me see. Niger, I believe it was, picked up his cross and carried it for him. Let me see. Put on a body, took the reed, raiment, found a man of Cyrene, Simon. Okay. And as they, or Niger was in the book of Acts, that's right. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross because it was too heavy. So Simon carried it. In order to get close to God, you got to give up some stuff. If you drink, you got to give it up because there's no drunken people going to be in heaven. If you smoke weed, you got to give it up. I know they legalize it on earth, but God never legalized it. That's called spiritism. Because when you're smoking and you are in a whole different state of mind, I know because I used to smoke a half ounce a day when I was in the world. I used to sell weight pounds and smoke a half ounce a day. So I know what I'm talking about. And when the Lord delivered me, he said spiritism. Mm -mm, spiritism. We drink alters your mind. Mm -mm. You got to get clean. Your system needs to get clean. Watch this. Because in 2 Corinthians Chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says, Of what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. He said, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And touch don't just mean with your hands. Don't think about the unclean thing. Stop looking at the unclean thing. Stop kissing the unclean thing. Stop saying unclean things. Stop. Stop. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time. When the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you.
and take care. <laughs> Till the next time, in Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you, and all that you are in my life, for all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I Satisfied.